Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a very sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Biliana Georgieva, who is in London in the UK. How are you doing, Biliana? Very well. Not that sunny London, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I can imagine. Well, you know, as I said, being originally from Dublin, I know exactly what it's like at this time of year. <laughs> it's getting exactly. dark and it's getting cold. <laughs> really, really dark, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and Biliana is, is a digital nerd and keynote speaker, training companies and virtual event organizers to do their best online hybrid VR and AR events. That's fantastic. And what we're going to talk about today is how digital technology has changed uh, the way that we work and operate and, and live. Um, so let's, um, Biliana, let's start off. Okay, so digital technology was changing our lives dramatically right up until the pandemic struck and now it has just gone into hyperdrive if you like and it's uh and a lot of a lot of companies and even individuals were kind of caught a little bit cold because they were kind of adopting and adapting to technology but doing it in a maybe a a, a, a slower or you know a slower paced way and now they're confronted with the reality that they have to kind of get on board the digital train that is absolutely correct, yes. And the way how companies actually can understand how digital they were before March 2020 is how long time it took them once the lockdown happened, how many days it took them to actually start uh, having all the employees working again, but working from home. So take the number of the days and then you know how digital your company was and how digital you are right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a great that's a great uh, a great way of doing it because I think uh, like pre the pandemic, I mean, the economies were doing well, you know, particularly the US, but globally things were going pretty well, and you know companies were largely being pretty successful. And when you're when you're doing well and things are going along, eh, you know, you're kind of like will paper over the cracks or you'll you'll uh, offset. Uh, inefficiencies with manual processes or you'll throw people at it but of course then the minute you have to pivot to a, a virtual working and relying on technology you suddenly realize where all those that those cracks are a lot bigger <laughs> a big ups <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah so so what are some of the uh, what are some of the ways that uh, what are some of the ways that these uh, the digital transformation has is really impacting the way companies operate and in the way people operate maybe even in surprising ways yeah, well, for the different professions, they actually hit different ways as uh, your audience are salespeople. Obviously, right now, um, majority of you watching this uh, cannot go to a meeting, shake the hands of the person and, and create this report directly uh, as face-to-face -face meetings and you have to do it over the, the camera. So this is completely different. You have to still watch the body language to understand as a salesperson uh, when you're doing your job to understand who is sitting in front of you as you don't know or you know a little bit of this person. So um, it's very, very different if you do face-to-face -face meeting or you're doing a virtual meeting with, uh, with someone. And that affects completely the numbers of the sales deals you're doing right now, I believe, and, and everything what's happening around. So there's a huge fear of, uh, in, in if I don't take only salespeople, but most of the professions, basically, the huge fear is what is digital, how, how exactly I'm going to do my job, how exactly I'm going to live my life, because uh, it's not just the work, but also our personal life. We have to digitally meet and network with our friends and our family. And in, in a certain uh, way, this is kind of sight and we feel limited. But you have to start asking your question, uh, yourself a question as what opportunities this gives me actually what is the good instead of instead of focusing on the bad thing uh you cannot meet physically people um what is the the good out of it what uh, and, and focus on that positive uh, positive as aspect because everything has a positive aspect so I would say for those of you who is completely afraid of uh, being digital, you know what, put a sign on the door of your bathroom um, and every morning read that sign says, 
digital is the new normal and it gives me a new opportunity today. So put that sign on the door and, and read it and then open the door, obviously, on the bathroom. <laughs> uh, you have to open that door every day and it will, it will uh, rewire your brain uh, in a really good uh, direction. Yeah, no, it's a it's it's a great point because yeah, there's um, a lot of salespeople and that have have struggled a little bit with Zoom, and even uh, even remarkably, uh, some people who are great working a room, great you know, when they go in, it doesn't matter who's there, and they're fantastic, but for some reason switching on a camera and, and doing it uh, over Zoom suddenly fills them with levels of trepidation. And, and it's, and it's kind of, and it doesn't really make sense. And I think the other part too is, and what I encourage people is like switch on your camera. And even if the prospect or the other person doesn't switch on their camera, you switch on their camera because the difference seeing your face and, hear, uh, and your voice at the same time is massive. Massive. Yeah, absolutely agree. I'm, I'm a professional speaker and actually that helped me a lot uh, right now to stand in front of a camera and actually speak with uh, my partners, clients, uh, do virtual trainings and, and record trainings. Uh, so all this is, is, uh, is very helpful, obviously. But yes, if you, if you have that fear, I can give you one tip as a, as a professional speaker. If you have that fear of the camera, name that camera after your friend and imagine that you're talking to, to that friend. Obviously, if you're speaking with someone like right now, I'm speaking to John, I'm not going to call you Mark, obviously, right? Yeah. If Mark is my, <laughs> the name of my camera, but just, just, just that's going to help you really to, to relax a lot more. And the fact that it's just the lens there and it's a camera. Uh, it, it, it will it will calm you down and it will uh, help you massively. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I guess there's another part, and I know that this is something that uh, you, you do a lot of work on, So, and it does directly affect sales as well. So, well, you know, sales are used to getting a lot of um, leads and opportunities coming through events and marketing activities and all of that. And uh, there's a lot of digital marketing, but on the event side and all of that, then that has had to evolve as well. So how how have you helped advise companies how to especially marketing, how to migrate to virtual events? Uh, I start training event organizers and event planners because I realize that um, if there is one way of combining my tech skills, um, uh, the digital skills together with uh, social media and marketing, uh, social selling, if you want to call it, and the public speaking, uh, then that would be to, to help the event organizers to, to understand how they can do and how they can organize and then run uh, the, the virtual events. And, uh, and when, I, when I train them, I basically uh, take what they have been creating as experience previously as a uh, live events and how they can move that experience to be digital. But you have to think about this. It's, it's, it's not gonna be the same, obviously. Uh, it's very different to be live and online, uh, but um, Again, uh, I, I teach them to concentrate on completely different positive uh, experiences as very different way instead of saying, oh, you know, it's not different. It's very different and I'm not going to succeed. I'm, I'm not going to make it. Uh, I'm not going to create that ambience and, and that environment. So, so what? Just, just move to move to completely different way of thinking and, and way of thinking how can I uh, right now provide uh, a very different experience? So what I, what I usually explain to, to, um, to people I work with in the old time, and old I mean nine months ago, which is yeah. not that long <laughs> back time in the ago. Old, back in the old days. <laughs> exactly. In the old days, if you think of um, salespeople were meeting uh, with clients because of traveling, because of time limitation. Uh, salespeople were meeting with clients once a year uh, or maximum twice a year. If we're talking about event organizers and, and corporate companies, I'm talking about conferences, expos, um, forums, uh, uh, industry breakfast, uh, trade shows, any of those um, business uh, events. 
uh, they were happening once a year because the preparation uh, was actually huge, it was taking months. Sure. And right now in the new digital world, what is happening is that uh, majority of the companies walk up finally and they say, actually, because it's virtual, I don't have to do it once a year. I'm going to run it every quarter. So think about this. If you right now have clients which in the past were doing it once a year and now they're going to give you um, orders to do it uh, every quarter. This is four events from just from one uh, client uh, every every year, and that client expects different experience uh, every time. So not just the experience you brought last time, but they expect something new and something bigger. And what I see in 2020 is that. Um, and you can tell me if, if you've seen this, but I've seen that uh, communities is getting, uh, the feeling of creating communities is getting bigger and bigger because we are all uh, locked in our houses, um, sometimes completely like drastically with uh, like Australia went through, through quite big mm -hmm. lockdown, for yeah. example. But um, in cases like this, we don't just want to go to a meeting uh, or, or an event where we see people through our camera. We want to have some kind of experience. Yeah. And, and when, that, um, when that event creates that uh, environment of community, and community is based on values and principles and, and shared, um, really shared values of, of business, values, then uh, you start talking to these people uh, even after the event and you create that, uh, that group of people. And this is, this is the biggest goal, I would say, of, of what you need to look for, uh, regardless if, you, if you're a salesperson doing your uh, meetings a lot more than before or um, creating events or anything as, as a yeah, business. I and I love what you're saying here, because one of the first things is that I think there is a lot of people at the beginning of this thought, OK, this is temporary. I'll go along with it uh, grudgingly. Can't wait to get back to the way it was. Uh, and now they're realizing, OK, not only is it probably not going to go back to the way it was, but there's actually benefits for the way it's going. It's going to be. So I like your idea about you know, embracing it. Um, and, I, and I think the other thing that you touched on here is. I don't think people, a lot of people understand until they get into it, how well you can connect virtually and how sometimes you can develop, it's, uh, you can develop deeper connections and relationships with people on, online. And especially, like you said, if you create communities around your events. So if you're not looking at it from that point of view, you're really kind of missing out. Exactly. Absolutely agree with that. Yes, I had um, I was invited as a as a keynote speaker to several uh, events, and uh, they were like industry breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that the people coming to it was a, on Zoom Zoom meetings, mm -hmm. and there were um, there were quite a lot of people. Every time there were different people, but I connected with some of them. And till today, uh, although they are not my uh, audience, I would say they're not my clients. Sure. Uh, I love speaking to them. They love speaking to me. And we did create that uh, community because it's based on, on the same values and the same principles we work and, and we follow at work. So that's, that's quite important. Yeah. And I think another aspect too is when it comes to companies is digital processes, right? Is that there was a lot of talk. There's been a lot of talk about digital processes pre the pandemic, but a lot of it was lip service and people go, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get around to digitizing our processes eventually. And now they realize they, that they have, to, they have to do that. So that kind of forces a bit of a rethink in about how organizations operate going forward. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say what, what I see is that um, I know that salespeople um, are used to have some kind of job description. I would, I would, mm -hmm. I'm going to call it job description. And yeah. now with the digital, this kind of moves towards completely different job description. And, and I would say the whole new digital world, it, it will change uh, drastically, not just the way how we perform day to day, but it's going to change our job description. And salespeople is one of those which are quite big 
uh, largely uh, affected by this. And as a salespeople, uh, I, would, I would highly advise you to start talking to your marketing department and, um, and the people who are organized, if there are some kind of people organizing events or like uh, the, the communication department, what you've got in the company, because you can, you can all get together and start organizing um, industry breakfast, for example, because majority of the people you actually speak with uh, as cast, uh, cl uh, current clients, but mm -hmm. potential clients as well, um, they would come to this industry breakfast, just organize, uh, start from small, start with five people and then, you know, enlarge it. But what is really important is to be consistent. So for example, um, if we decide some kind of industry breakfast, for example, and I can give you different forms, um, mm -hmm. uh, formats, um, you can, you can say like, we organize uh, an industry breakfast or X uh, type of event every first Friday of the month or every first, uh, Monday is the worst day, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Wednesdays uh, are great days. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday are the best days actually to organize something like this. And mm -hmm. you're gonna see at some point, at the beginning will be very slow, I can tell you, but if you're consistent and you deliver it twice a month or, um, or once a month and people get used to the idea that they can come, jump, and really not just learn something new, but also network to really good people, then um, they will start coming more and more to, to you, but just be consistent. So what you can do is different formats, uh, all the your salesperson, you can, you can start putting different themes uh, about creating industry breakfast. So yeah. invite them, uh, put it in the morning, um, ask everyone to grab a you know a cup of coffee or tea and then just join you for, uh, um, I would say what I see right now, 40 minutes is really good timing for such kind mm -hmm. of industry breakfast. Uh, you can do also round tables, digital round tables. So right. invite uh, speakers, uh, invite uh, experts in different areas uh, to the people you, you work with uh, or your uh, prospects and, um, you know, advertise it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great platform to advertise such kind of um, roundtables. You can create panels. Uh, panels mm -hmm. is where you can, you can um, invite three or four people, uh, to prepare some kind of questions, send them the questions to those people and then just watch, you know, like invite people to watch those three to four people maximum to, to watch the panel. Um, networking is a great one. Uh, I've seen wine tasting and whiskey tasting. <laughs> absolutely brilliant way because people are a lot more relaxed uh and uh, you know they just um chill and and chat around mm -hmm. um i've seen focus groups uh on specific things as well this is another format what uh, what people can organize so regardless what is the format just 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 create something start once a month and and go from there you know yeah. um, and, and forget it's a sales forget that you're a sales person just just enjoy just just have fun with it yeah no i think those are fantastic uh, fantastic options there and i think the, the the key message coming through here is there are lots of options you're not restricted so you got to kind of get that mindset shift going the fact that yeah you can't do things the way maybe you like to do things or the maybe the way you always did things but there are so many options to do them differently so find the one that works for you but don't just sit there and wait for something i mean get in there pick something give it a go throw yourself into it. and as you say like enjoy it for goodness sake why not yeah exactly <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Yeah, think we say think outside the box, which is very easy, you know, but it's kind of used and overused uh, sure. expression, think out, yeah. outside the box, but just start thinking, what can you, how you can have fun. That, that yeah. was the and, 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 you, and it was a great piece of advice there is like, if you're, if you're a salesperson listening, like, go, to, go to your marketing department, go to your community and say, okay, guy, I want to do something different. I want your help. I want to get, because you'll find and maybe you haven't communicated with them much in the past, but you'll find pretty much that they're going to be really excited and they'll be full of ideas and they'll collaborate with you and they'll want you to succeed and they'll want to be able to show other people how they're helping you and all that. So it's a, it's a big win-win if you go do it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And again, if you're afraid, put a sign on the bathroom door. Digital is <laughs> normal and gives me opportun new opportunities every day. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, great way to finish up, Billyana. Yeah, that's it. New, new opportunities every day. So go, go on, get your get your markers out there and get your uh, piece of paper and start making your sign and name your video camera. I love that one. Name your webcam. <laughs> name it to, to somebody who's friendly to you. Don't be afraid. Doesn't bite. I promise you. I have done. I have done. Um, I don't know. Six hundred online interviews and panel discussions and so, uh, at this stage and. Uh, it's all about practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets. It's as simple as that, just like everything else in life. I love your interviews, absolutely. I, <laughs> I, I, I go on YouTube and I watch them and, and you always have really, really good people. And I, I, I always have one tip out of every, at minimum one tip out of every video, every interview. So. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic, and there's and there's plenty uh, plenty in this interview for people to take a, uh, take away. So listen, uh, Biliana, before we go, all of Biliana's information will be below this video. But please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. I train event organizers and event planners, and if you want to contact me because you're about to start your first event or you already do events, but you want to create different experience every time, then just uh, find me on LinkedIn, on Biliana Georgieva, or type BizBilly, B-I-Z-B-I-L-Y, BizBilly. And uh, yeah, you're gonna find my profile on LinkedIn and um, DM me there, and I will, I will answer. Excellent. Listen, thanks again. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.